Come on, let's give a warm welcome to Bobby Connors. He comes. God bless you, Pastor. All right. Thank you. Be seated. Can you believe? Thank you. Can you believe this? That we've been preaching 53 years. I've averaged speaking five times a week for 53 years. I'm living proof practice won't make perfect. That's, that's the truth. That's the absolute truth. I've been preaching 53 years and I've averaged speaking five times a week. And uh, wow, uh, I'm telling you, God, uh, the night I got saved, the Lord said, I'm going to send you around the whole world with the gospel. I said to him, fat chance. That means no way. But boy, I wore out more passports than you could pack, you know. Uh, but I'm telling you, God's up to something. Isn't he a good, good God? He's good. Uh, I'm telling you, Nate, one of my favorite verses in the whole Bible is Nahum 1 7. It says, God is good. A stronghold in the day of trouble. He knows those that are trusting him. I'm so glad it didn't say God was good or he's going to be good. Right in the middle of our mess, he's good. He's good. And don't ever forget the goodness of God. Pastor quoted it every good and perfect gift comes down from the Father of lights in whom there's no variableness or shadow of turning. Yes. That just simply says in our terms, God ain't fickle. <laughs> he, he's, he, he's eternally steadfast and the same. He said, I'm the Lord. I change not. Boy, we live in a culture. It can change overnight, can't it? Yes. But not him. The grass withers, the flower fades, but the word of our God, what? Stands firm. Aren't you glad? Thank you, Jesus. We don't have to build on shaky sand. We can build on the solid rock of the Word of God. Mm. And let me tell you about God. Uh, it says in Philippians 1, 6, being confident of this very thing, he that hath begun a good work in you will continue it until the day of Christ Jesus. Amen. That yes. just simply says, God is author and finisher, not author and oops. Yes. See, yes. He's going to finish what he started in your life. And he has not forgot about you. And I'm, I want you to know something. Uh, he wants to stir up your heart. He wants your heart ablaze for him. He wants you burning with the passion of God. The Lord came to me and said, Bobby, I want you to start announcing that I'm going to answer the prayer Paul prayed in Colossians chapter 1. I said, okay, God, you're telling me, tell the people, you're getting ready to answer the prayer Paul prayed in Colossians chapter 1. He said, that's correct. Now, have you read the prayer Paul prayed? It's, when I read that thing, I got his, that was one of, one, one of the most exciting moments. God said, I'm about to answer that prayer for the people that are zealously in love with the Holy Spirit. Yes. And let's, you'll look at that yes. just for a moment. Uh, turn with me to Colossians chapter 1. Okay. Oh, boy, Colossians. It's, it, it's in the Bible. And, and I, it's pretty, pretty wild. Don't you like the Word of God? Oh, me. Colossians chapter 1. And uh, we, we're going to start with uh, chapter 1 and starting with verse 8. Uh, Paul gets a report back from a missionary trip. The, a man tells him about one of the churches that Paul had started and how the people were zealously in love with the Holy Spirit. I, we'll start reading here in verse 8. Uh, Epaphrodites has given Paul the report. And he also informed us of your love in the Holy Spirit. Now, I like that, but that's a little weak. If you look at this in the Greek, it says, your burning, zealous love for the Holy Spirit. Wow. I mean, your passionate, burning love for the Holy Spirit. He also informed us of your burning, zealous love for the Holy Spirit. For this reason, your burning, zealous love for the Holy Spirit. For this reason, we also, from the day we heard of it, your burning, zealous love for the Holy Spirit have not ceased to pray and make it make special requests for you, asking that you might be filled with the full, clear, deep knowledge of His will in all spiritual wisdom and comprehensive insights into the ways and the purposes of God and in understanding and discerning of spiritual things. How many of you want that? Yes. I do. I, oh, and it gets good. 
Oh, look at that. That, he, you, that you may be filled with the full, deep, clear knowledge of his will in all spiritual wisdom and in comprehensive insights into the ways and the purposes of God and in understanding and discerning of spiritual things. Verse 10 says that you may walk, live, and conduct yourselves in a manner worthy of the Lord, fully pleasing to him and uh, desiring to please him in all things, bearing fruit in every good work and steadily growing and increasing by the knowledge of God. Wow, don't you like that? I do. Verse 11, we pray that you may be invigorated. Oh, look at that. Invigorated. Our whole culture tries to get stimulated from the outside in. Suck up a roll, roll of cocaine, swallow some uh, stuff. For those that don't do that, they do the uh, bull, or what, red bull or something like that. Yeah, get your wings. Uh, listen, I went to Turkey and drank some coffee. Good Lord. Woo, that's the strongest stuff I ever put in my mouth. It's about a cup about that big around, about that tall. And they put it on their shoulder. They got a coffee urn on their shoulder and they come by. Where we ha were having coffee, uh, famous people fly their planes in there and land and have a cup of coffee. Wow. I'm there, and, but uh, that's pretty wild. And they dump that thing and you drink that thing and you wouldn't get it swallowed hardly. You hardly go, glink, 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 like. <laughs> but I like that word, invigorated. invigorated. Strengthened from the inside out. Amen. That's what we got. That's what the Holy Ghost will do for invigorated. Don't you want to be invigorated? Yes. I'm telling you. I'll tell you how I do the ministry. I'm 79 years old, and I uh, listen. I can wear out these young pups. Oh Lord, we we we, we go. It's crazy. I got a team of guys who sometimes they'll travel around with me. Oh, about two or three nights, they, their tongues are lolled out, and they go, oh, I got to go to bed and all this kind of stuff. Wait a minute. I do what I do through, here it is, superhuman energy. There it is. That's in the Bible. Amen. It's right there in Colossians. Amen. Superhuman energy. You can't keep the schedule like we do without superhuman energy. Amen. And God invokes it in us. He stirs it up. And in his presence is fullness of joy, and the joy of the Lord is our strength. A merry heart does good like a medicine. Yeah, brother, I know all that, but uh, you just don't know what I'm going through. Change your tune. Amen. A rotten attitude don't work. Always have the attitude of gratitude, and it'll change your atmosphere. Yeah, it really will. Don't get up and go, uh, get up and go, glory to God. We have got to quit cursing ourselves. Yes. You know, yes. just start speaking well of yourself. Yes. The power of life and death is somewhere, oh, right in your tongue. <laughs> and we have got to start blessing ourselves. Yes. And, and listen, and if you want to make the devil mad, do that Psalms 47 1. Shout to the Lord with the voice of triumph and clap your hands. It confuses him. It, it incites terror in him when the saints of God shout to the Lord and clap their hands. It says it confuses the enemy. I want to mess him up, get his head twisted, don't you? We're not going to let him just have free reign. Listen, he knows he's defeated. He just doesn't want you to know that he's defeated. I'm telling you, God has given us power to trample on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy and it'll in no wise hurt you. I'm telling you, uh, isn't it Romans 16, 20? Yeah, Romans 16, 20 said, the God of peace will crush Satan under your feet shortly. Shortly means now, the next step. Wow, the God of what? Not panic, peace. We, we need the peace of God. Yes, we do. How do we get the peace of God? Isaiah 26, 3. Thou will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed upon thee. The devil's going to try to play mind games with you. Yeah. Have you ever made your mind up that you're going to study the Word of God? Yeah. I mean, you'll get in a quiet place, you'll do your prayer, and then you'll open the Bible and you'll go, Oh, Holy Ghost, speak to me. And then all of a sudden, somewhere from out there, they'll go, Is the house payment due? Yeah. You know, a lot of the kids are getting measles. You know, That's the devil disturbing and distracting you. I did a whole school on the deadly darts of the devil. And, and listen, doubt is one of them. Delusion is one of them. Deception is one of them. 
We need to get rid of the deadly darts of the devil. How do you do it? You quench it with the shield of faith. The Bible said, arise you princes and oil the shields because the deadly foe is at the gate. It's not a time to slumber. It's a time to uh, get ready. Don't you want to get ready? Yes, yes sir. All right. Yes. What in the world? Let's, I, I got a lot of stuff to talk about. But uh, I, I want to talk about things that happen to us all individually. Every one of us, times in our life, we get weary. Yes. But let us not grow weary in well-doing. We will reap if we faint not. Amen. Don't give up. Don't give in. And I'll tell you, when the devil starts pushing on you, push back. Yes. How do you push back? You find those verses of victory. Yes. I'll not fear. The Lord is my yes. light and my salvation. Start quoting back. Yes. Fill the whole atmosphere yes. with what God yes. says about his love and his loyalty to you. Yes. He won't leave us nor forsake us. Yes. He's a friend that sticks closer than a brother. Yes. And so or, or if you start looking at what the devil's doing. Oh, man. No, no. It says, men's hearts failing them for the things they see coming upon the earth. So lift your vision higher and look to the Lord. And I'm telling you, the Lord will help you through any kind of, uh, and he can turn a tragedy into a triumph. A real message into a, a real mess into a message. He can. I watched him do it. I, and I've seen things where I thought, oh, my, could anything good come from this? Yes. All things work together for to them that love God who are called according to his purpose. Even yes. when it seems like it's, it's tragedy and trauma. But boy, I'm telling you, God is for you. Yes. It doesn't matter who's against you. You are more than a conqueror. You're victorious. Yes. Yes. And you need to start saying that. Yes. You ought to look at yourself in the mirror and say, I can't be stopped. Yes. We're unstoppable. Yes. We are more than a conqueror. Yes. We're, we're a super victorious one through Christ. Now, in our own, we can't do a thing. John 15, 5, without him, we can't do a thing. Right. Philippians, with him, through him, by him, we accomplish everything. And so here's what I want you to grasp. Failure is not final unless you let it be. Yeah. Yeah. Now, have you ever tried a project and it failed? Don't give, if God told you to do it, don't give up. Right. Get right back in it. Yeah. I'm telling you, and, and he'll bring it to pass. Sometimes he just wants to see uh, if you're going to be residual. Uh, one time I was, uh, uh, I told you I played football. And the football coach, Mr. Guatney, he said, one thing about Connor, he's got tenacity. I didn't know what I had. I thought maybe the deodorant really quit. I didn't know the word tenacity. And then uh, later on I found out it's a good thing. Yeah, it's like you hang on. And we've got to learn how to hang on. It says, hold on to hope. Hebrews 10, 35, don't fling away your steadfast confidence in God because your steadfast confidence in God brings with it a great recompense of reward. Uh, one translation says, hold on to hope. It pays big dividends. The devil wants to get you hopeless. Yes. Oh, yeah. And he, he'll, he'll try to shatter your dreams and he'll try to get you so mixed up. But I'm telling you, that's when you need to just say, Holy Ghost, I want you to speak to me. I want you to give me wisdom. I want you to give me knowledge and understanding. And he'll, do, he'll charge your course. And I'm telling you, uh, God, if God be for us, who can be against us? All right. Uh, this Colossians, that, that's pretty wild. Here's that superhuman thing is verse 29. For this I labored unto weariness and uh, uh, it says striving with all the superhuman energy which he so easily uh, stirred up within me. See, uh, that was Paul saying, I tried to get you mature and I worked at it so hard I got weary. But the Holy Ghost gave him that superhuman energy. Yes. Now, I, I want to be invigorated, don't you? Yes. Well, sure. You say, well, how does it happen? I say, a 40, they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. Wow. Well, is that for me too, brother? Yes. <laughs> they that wait upon the Lord. How does that work? Psalms 46 verse 10 says, be still and know that I am God. Yes. Any benefit to knowing God? Yes. Book of Job says, acquaint now thyself with God and be at peace and good will come to you. Daniel 1132b, talking about is there any benefit to knowing God? Daniel 1132b says, but the people that do know their God, they will display strength and take action. Yes. They'll do mighty exploits. 
That's you. Mighty exploits. Well, I, I don't. Uh, these people that go, well, you know, I don't want to be too fanatical. We are to be wild for Jesus. Just wild for him. Uh, listen, he's worthwhile. Well, I, I told you all this story, I think. I'd, uh, I, I'd preached about the cross hundreds of times. And it's a spring day. I'm down in uh, the, the office, and it's a spring day. Boy, the birds are singing, and the bass are biting. And I'm getting ready. Uh, I'm getting ready to prepare a message about the cross. And boy, I, in a way, I wanted to go on out and, and, uh, and go fishing or do something. But I, I felt the urge to stay there in the office. But I preached on the cross uh, uh, hundreds of times. So I'm sitting at my desk, got all the notes and everything there. And I'm pulling my chair just a little bit closer to the desk. Now, this is true. This is absolutely true. I'm pulling my chair to the desk a little bit closer, and I made a small, muddled little prayer. Here's what I said. Lord, please make this more than mere words. Amen. The moment I said that, whoom, I'm jerked up out of my office. I'm catapulted back 2,000 years in wow. history. I'm standing on the cobblestone streets of Jerusalem, and here comes a mob. It's Christ bearing his cross. And he walks from here to this camera, from here to this camera. And I, I'm telling you, my mind is whirling so fast. And I'm going, this I, I was in my office. And when our eyes met, he was here to this camera. When my eyes met his, all the strength left my legs. And I fell on the cobblestones. And I get up and go to the cross with Christ. This was, I wrote about it. This is before Mel Gibson made that movie, yes. The Passion of the Christ. I wrote a little book. It's called uh, The Christ. I'll tell you what Mel Gibson couldn't capture was the smells. Uh, I'm telling you, there's clotted blood, there's uh, urine, there's everything else. The demons whirling everywhere. Jesus said, strong bulls. Remember that? And boy, the cross. And so, man, uh, you talk about something. So I wrote about it. And uh, churches bought that little book, The Cross, by the thousands and gave out it to Mel Gibson movies. But we need to get to learn, we need to learn more about Christ. I'm telling you, he's worthwhile of our study, isn't he? And uh, we need to center in as leaders the centricity of Christ. Everything has to cohere in him. I mean, listen, by him we live and move and have our being. We need to start, re, re, we need to start releasing knowledge of the most high God. I'm telling you because the Bible said my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Boy, did I get a chewing out. The Lord told me by the, the Lord. The Lord told me, uh, said, Bobby, I want you to write a book about heaven's host, the faithful and the fallen. There's some back there. I want you to write a book about the faithful and the fallen. The, the, that means the, the good angels and the demons. So I jumped right on the angel part. Angels were mentioned 373 times in the Bible. Most of us would be dead mangled if it hadn't been for the action of angels. Nice. They're around us to protect us. So I jumped in on that thing. I wrote the book uh, and I wrote a lot about angels and wrote just a little bit about demons. Mm. I'm driving my truck. <laughs> I have a passenger, Jesus. And he said, uh, I told you to write a book about the heaven's hosts, the faithful and the fallen. And I said, yes, I did. He said, you did real well. On the angels, but you skipped over some on the fallen. Now, I was going to justify myself. That's, that's not nice. I was going to justify myself to the Lord. So I said, well, you know, I didn't want to give the devil a lot of due, you know, a lot of notoriety. Ooh, didn't work. The Lord said to me, you know my word. I would not have you ignorant, brethren, concerning the devil and his devices. He said, the only way you can keep the body of Christ from being ignorant is to teach them. So I had to rewrite. And so I wrote about the demons. I wrote about their characteristics. I wrote about how you can smell different classes of demons. You ever walk in a place and it smells like kitty litter? It's incest. It's incest. You can smell different cancers. Yes. And so I wrote about it in the book. But I, I thought I could justify myself and say I didn't want to give the devil a lot of you. And boy, 
He said, you know my word. I would not have you ignorant, brethren, concerning the devil and his plots and plans and devices. And the only way to keep the body of Christ from being ignorant is to teach him. So that's the book, Heaven's Host, Amen. Faithful and Fallen. Hi, and listen. God wants us to expose the hidden works of darkness. Yes. Yes. And we, we, need to get, we need to get really serious about spiritual warfare. Yes. Uh, greater is he that's in us than he that's in the world. Amen. We cannot be defeated. And we need to really, uh, y'all, you ready for some stuff? Yes. You remember over there in Sedona? Well. Remember a few years ago, uh, several people died in a sweat lodge? Yes. All right. Uh, somebody built a sweat lodge, but they built it wrong. And uh, some people trying to purify their souls get in the sweat lodge and they died. Several people died. And I'm, I'm, I'm there and the, um, the Lord said, Bobby, what do you think about that? I said, what do you think about it? He said, uh, those people were looking for me. They wanted to purify their soul, but they got into this cultic thing and died. I said, well, Lord, what do you want me to do about it? Now, you better watch out when you ask the Lord what he wants you to do about it. Because here's what he said I want you to do about it, Bobby. I want you to go to Sedona, and I want you to get a meeting room, a room, and I want you to invite, invite all the witches and warlocks around the world to come. That's what he told me. I said, are you sure? He said, oh. <laughs> so, this is all true. I, so I went to there. It's hard to get a preacher to give you his, their, your, their church if you're going to invite all the witches and warlocks. You know, nobody's going, oh, come on, Bobby, we'd love, love to have you. But somebody did. They opened up their ministry, and that's, I'm grateful for it. And I'm telling you, the word got out real quick. All the witches and warlocks, they showed up. And there they are. And uh, so I said, okay, God, here they are. And he said, I want you to pick out the leader. And uh, I'm telling you, so I scanned the crowd, and there she was. And uh, happened to be from London. I said, uh, you leading all this? She said, I certainly am. Mm -hmm. And I said, well, stand out in the aisle. So she's standing out there about, I don't know what, 15, 20 feet away. So she's standing there. And I said, uh, I'll give you a few moments to repent and, and give, give you life to the Lord. And she said, I'm perfectly fine. Thank you. Wow. And so all of the, there's maybe one or two other Christians in the room. You know what I mean? <laughs> Nobody, everybody wants to say, well, I'm, no, no. then nobody wants to show up for war. You know what I mean? Oh, man. So there she is. And she's, oh, the whole place is just uh, caustic with uh, their, their venom. And I said, uh, so you're perfectly fine, are you? And she said, yes, like this, yes. And the Lord said, now, don't do like that. He said, just do like this. So I said, okay, since you're perfectly fine here. And it knocked her about eight feet in the air. Straight up in the air. She does a couple of flips and hits the ground like a sack of cotton. Wham! She screams and runs out and every one of them pulled out like a funnel. See, God doesn't mind having showdowns. You understand that? We're more than conquerors. I'm telling you guys, we, we have got to start taking a bold stand against the occult. They, they, they do more to try to stop revival than we do to start it. But I'm telling you, it's a dumb devil send a church, uh, a witch to church. It's a dumb devil. That's a good way to get your army depleted. Because listen, I'm telling you, the youngest Christian has within them the Holy Ghost of God. And that's greater than the power of Satan. Isn't that cool? Well, anyway, that happened. Uh, wow. But you go, well, Bobby, uh, I don't want any conflict. Get out of church then. There's going to be conflict. There is. But we're fighting from victory, not for victory. Yes, yes. Remember when our Savior strung himself upon the cross? He cried out, what? It's finished. He didn't say, I'm finished. He said, it's finished. I dare you to look that up. The term he used is a farming term. It's finished. It says everything that should have been done is totally done. Nothing's left undone that needed to be done. Say complete. I'm telling you, in him you're complete. I'm telling you, ooh, 
And we got to get to know Jesus better. Here's how you do it. This book right here. You get alone with God and say, Lord, reveal yourself. Oh, look, look what it says. Just talking. Just look, my eye fell on this verse. Colossians chapter 2, verse 3. In him, Christ, all the treasures of divine wisdom and comprehensive insights into the ways and the purposes of God and all the riches of the spiritual knowledge and enlightenments are stored up and lay hidden. Everything you need is in Jesus. Yeah. I tell you what we ought to do. We ought to do a conference here on the centricity of Christ. I mean, really, in, invite leaders, invite people. If we don't know who we're following, they don't want to know who they're following. And we, we need to know for sure who's leading the band. Yes. All right, boy, all this comprehensive insights. Look at verse 26. The mysteries of which were hidden for all ages and generations from, uh, from angels and men, but now is released and revealed to his holy people the saints. We're in a spiritual sensitivity time. The things that have been secret are now being revealed. And they're all hidden in Christ. You just read it. So we need, the, we need to saturate our heart and mind with the centricity of Christ. Everything zeroes back on him. You remember when he was crucified, what happened to uh, the rocks? The rocks started trembling, breaking apart because he that keeps everything cohered was dying. Wow. wow. Oh, you better study about Jesus. Oh, he says that you may walk worthy of the Lord and conduct yourself in a manner worthy of the Lord, fully pleasing him and desiring to please him in all things, bearing fruit in, oh boy, we need to know more about Jesus, don't yes, we? we do. I'm telling you, you'll never be able to find out all about him. He's, you can't. I, 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 I got a verse that'll show you. He's unfathomable. You need to, I'm telling you. But anyway, we need to study and find out everything we can. Look what it says. Verse 19, still in Colossians 1. For it has pleased the Father that all the divine fullness, the sum total of divine perfection and powers and attributes should dwell in Him permanently, in Christ. How many? All. That's why we need to get to know who we're following. And we need to get to know him in depth. Yes. Not just casually. We need to learn everything we can about him. Yes. I'm telling you. Because the more you know about him, the bolder you get. Yes. Him to know, whom to know is life eternal. So we, 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 I want us to get together. And we need to set up a time where we have a whole, whole thing on the centricity of Christ. Jesus. Everything. Coheres in him. Yeah. Oh, boy. You, that's enough right here that, to, to start a real ruckus. Ah, oh, boy. We got to know who he is. And if you know who he is, you'll never know who you are till you know who you are. Yeah. We're his chosen people, yeah. a royal priesthood, a holy nation. Yeah. Listen. Well, you know, did you believe heaven and hell both are asking the same question to you? Heaven and hell, holy God and hateful devil are synchronized on what they're asking the body of Christ. Here's the question. Who do you think you are? Hell's going, who do you think you are? And heaven's going, who do you think you are? See, as a person thinks in their heart, that's how they're going to be. If you see yourself weak, guess what? You'll be weak. You need to see yourself bold, brave, very courageous, conquering. Well, you know, Bobby. No, stir yourself up. Don't you want to get stirred up? Yes. I'll tell you what. Uh, we, we're a little bit too predictable. Yeah. We need to be so full of the things of God, God could whisper and we'd change the whole course. Yeah. Wow. wow. Man. Yeah. So I told you a while, well, during the school that I was going to speak about what to do when you don't, didn't know what to do. Yeah. But I'm here to tell you, I, I want us to zero in on this centricity of Christ for a moment. By him we live and move and have our being. I'm telling you, he holds everything together. It is amazing. And boy, you, the innumerable angels worship him. Yeah. Oh, man, can you imagine after all these eons, they still go, holy, holy. Wow. 
That's going to be one of the great treasures of heaven is we're going to get there. And God is going to continue throughout eons of eternity, releasing more of who He is. Yes. Holy. Can you imagine that? Wow. Uh, yeah, you're, we're not going to be like Chevy Chase. Remember that? Lampoon vacation? Yes. You got there and goes, get, get up and jump back in the station wagon. No, we're going to get there and it's going to take eons of eternity. And still, we wow. won't know all about Him. Amen. He'll release more and more of who He is and His glory. Yes. Ooh. This thing's wonderful. The Bible says, I go to prepare a place for you. If I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you. I am there, you'll be. I don't know of anybody in the right mind that would build a house and not look at it. We need to look and see what God's prepared for us and how to attain it and how to get there. Christ, that's the only way. He said, in my Father's house are what? Many mansions. If it were not so, I'd tell you. Oh, some churches build the theology on country and western song. Just build me a cabin on the hills of glory. <laughs> ah, no. Settle for a cabin if you want. I like the mansion deal better, don't you? Yeah. Yeah, that was my country and western song. <laughs> See, I told you I got knocked out and heard Conway Twitty. But uh, he sang a little better than me. But, uh, all right. <laughs> yeah. Good Lord. I want you to start enjoying yourself. Yes. Hallelujah. Just start enjoying yourself. Yes. You go, well, Bobby, I got some issues. <laughs> well, are you going to carry them or are you going to give them to Jesus? Yes. Come unto me, all you that labor and heavy laden. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me. I am meek and lowly in heart. You will find rest for your souls. Yes, or you can wear yourself out, have a nervous breakdown, yeah. spend the rest of your life on Valium and some other stuff. Going, who was that? You know. Get in your right mind. Amen. And your right mind is when you're focused on Him. Amen. Yeah. I'm telling you. He, he can straighten out things, can He? Yes. Y'all want to hear a story? Yeah. Yes. I went to, a, I, I got to go to a, a psychiatrist. I was a guest, not a, not a patient. <laughs> This is, this is all true. Joe, I'd led, I'd led a, a young a war veteran to Jesus. He had this, he'd been in the wars and, oh, it was terrible. He was, he was absolutely deranged and just, just a, a basket case. Had a family and some little beautiful little girls. And uh, he gets born again. And he's a totally new person. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he's the new, and he's totally new, absolutely saved. And he says, the government, I still have to go to visit with the psychiatrist. And I said, he said, would you come go with me? And I said, yes. See, I don't, I like to try new things. Yeah. <laughs> so I'd never been to the psychiatrist. Let me tell you about, <laughs> Willie was the, 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 the guy that got saved. So he said, would you please go with me to my psychiatrist visit? He said, it's going to be maybe an hour and 45 minutes long. I said, well, I'll go. And so we get there to the office of the psychiatrist. And so Willie signs in, and they carry Willie over there and put him in a chair that looked like a souped-up dentist chair. It would kind of lay back like that. And the psychiatrist was sitting in a big leather overstuffed chair beside Willie. I'm all the way over there in a flat back chair really uncomfortable so here we go i'm over here there's a there's willie and there's a psychiatrist the psychiatrist uh is smoking and he's lighting a cigarette off a cigarette wow. blowing smoke everywhere and it, it just now i'm going to be frank here i sit there listen to that psychiatrist babble Craziest crap you've ever heard. I'm telling you, crazy, crazy. So that psychiatrist took a big drag off his cigarette and goes, <laughs> said, well, Rev, what do you think? Now, if that ain't an invitation, I ain't never had one. <laughs> well, Rev, what do you think? I said, you really want to know? He's going, yeah. I said, I think you're way more screwed up than Willie. <laughs> Guess what he said? What? I think you're right. Can you help me? 
I walked over there, cast the devil out of the psychiatrist. He carried me to his house. We cast the devil out of his wife. They tried to harm me in their practice. I'm telling you, we can't have crazy people trying to help us. Good Lord. That's all true. Isn't that something? But, well, anyway. Yeah. See, I don't mind getting in the mix. There you go. You know what I mean? Yeah. Well, you know, you know, no, let's stir stuff up. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. We got, we, somebody's got to. We, we, I don't want us to just sit idle. We, we've got to get aggressive. I'm talking about winning souls, being aggressive, prayer life, uh, aggressive, fasting, praying, pulling down strongholds. We, we got to get serious about the war we're in. The devil is really trying to take ground. I'll tell you what he's after, the children. Have you noticed in the Bible, every culture had child sacrifice? In every pagan culture had child sacrifice. Moloch, a burning god, they throw the babies in the arms. That's what America's had. Child sacrifice, abortion. And boy, you know, when they got voted out, the devil got mad. But we're going to have to still keep on pushing. We're not, we're not going to let the devil have the young people. We're going, to, we're going to put up a struggle. We're going to demand that they quit brainwashing our kids, saturating them with all kind of crazy stuff. We pay their taxes. We pay, we pay them to teach them history, to teach them mathematics, not to talk about all the other stuff they're trying to poke in them. That's a bunch of perverts. And uh, we're not going to put up with it. We're gonna, you need to get your crew together and start making every school district meeting and protest it. Just stand up and say, we're, from the, we're the team from the kind of worship center and we're here to stand in opposition. Amen. What? <laughs> yeah. Somebody's got to do it. Uh, and, uh, and apparently, the modern day culture's not going to do it. But I'm telling you, but listen, we're modern day in a different way. Amen. We've got our second wind and we're going to take ground for Christ. Yes. It says that the evil forces ruled and raged until the ancient of days stood, dropped his gavel, rendered a verdict on behalf of the saints of God, and the saints possessed the land. And God said, Bobby, you tell my church you're going, they're going to get back sevenfold yes. of everything the devil yes. stole. Yes. But we're going to have to get aggressive about it. We've got to know who we are yeah. and whose we are, and we've got to know the weapons that are available to us. Amen. Taking the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. Remember when Jesus was being tempted by the devil? What did he, what, every time the devil would say something, Jesus would say, it is written. Yes. See, that's why we need to know the Bible is a sword. Mm -hmm. Taking the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. Okay, so y'all want to hear about what to do when you don't know what to do? Yeah. All right, I'll show it to you. It's, it's Psalms 107. Let's look at that. Y'all ready? Okay, here we go. Psalms. Here's a piece of paper. Yeah. Good gracious. My wife, Carolyn, has been un, uh, unearthing uh, all the archives. She drug out this thing, Pastor Joe, and it's got everywhere I went. For a year, oh Lord, you can look at it and get tired. And, and we, I'm talking about it, it's all over the world. Yeah. And I'm telling you though, that's what God wants us to do. He wants us to be instant in season and out of season. But she's drug up some of the old visitations that I had that I would journal, you know. Good gracious. They're current for right now. I'm telling you. And that's what we got to do. We've got, to, we've got to bring the Word of God back before the people where they'll know what they're supposed to do. If the trumpet doesn't make a sure sound, the saints won't know how to rally. And uh, it, it, the trumpet's sounding. Boy, the angels visited with me on the Day of Atonement and screamed out, Sound the alarm, awake the warriors, mobilize the saints. And we've got to study the word mobilization. Getting the troops to the most advantageous place for victory. And so, okay, all right. 
Psalms. Okay, here we go. I'm in Psalms 107, and I'm in verse 23. Some go down to the sea in ships. Have to turn a page. Some go down to the sea in ships and travel over, in, over the waters in ships and do business in great waters. Okay, let's stop right there. So far, we're talking about a bunch of sailors that works on a ship, correct? Yes. Look what it says. Verse 24. These seasoned sailors, they see the works of the Lord and his wonders in the deep. For he commands and raises up the storm and winds, which lift up the waves of the sea. The, the, they, those aboard mount up to the heavens. They go down again to the depths. Their courage melts away because of the plight. They reel to and fro, and they stagger like drunken men, and they are at their Wits end. Well, you ever been there? I promise you, you have to get there. It's a journey every one of us have to take. What is being at your wits end? Now, these are seasoned sailors. I'm sure when the first wind began to blow, they thought, been there, done this. But this is a storm different than anything else. The clue is, who started the storm? The Lord. He raises up the stormy winds, not trying to hurt the guys, but to show them how desperately they need him. And it said, the winds lift up the sea as high as the ships, as high as the heavens, drop it down as low as the depths. It said, these seasoned sailors, now they're staggering to and fro as drunken men, and they are at their wit's end. That's what being at your wit's end means, that you've expelled, expired, expended every bit of your expertise, and nothing has worked. Wow, there they are. There they are. Now, who started the storm? The Lord. Why? To teach the men. And here's what it says. Oh, that men would praise God for his goodness. And it says, then, when they're at their wit's end, then they cried unto the Lord in their distress. And the Lord heard them and brought a calm to the sea. And they were able to get into their desired haven. Oh, that men would praise God for his goodness. We have got to stop taking credit for what God has done. Amen. Look what I've done. Well, you're in a mess before God showed up, you know. And oh, that men would praise God for his goodness. Any good gift comes from God. Amen. And one of the great things we need to be so grateful for is favor. The favor of the Lord. It's, in it Psalms, uh, Psalms 30 verse 5 said, God's anger is but for a tiny moment. His favor is for a complete lifetime. And it says, weeping will last through the night, but joy will come in the morning. I'm telling you, we have got to realize God can change things yes. in a moment. I mean, turn things all around. It really is pretty amazing. And what we got to do is start believing God for almost unbelievable things. Yes. I, maybe you, you say, well, you know, I wanted to get an, another job, but... Nobody's hiring. Well, if God told you to get another job, he'll open up a place. I mean, they'll create something for you to do because God is going to go before you and make crooked ways straight. I quoted the verse during the school, Isaiah 40, 3 through 5, and this is for you. The voice of one in the wilderness crying, prepare you the way of the Lord. Make straight in the desert a highway. Lord the mountains, fill in the valleys. Pick up the stumbling stones and make crooked ways straight and the glory of the Lord will be revealed and all flesh will see it together and the mouth of the Lord has declared it. Amen. Okay, Psalms 43 through 5. You say, the voice of one in the wilderness. Yes, we're in a spiritual wilderness. Don't you know it? Turn on the TV, you can see it. Listen to the politicians, you can see it. Spiritual wilderness. But here, I'm telling you, the church is coming up out of the wilderness. Yes, hallelujah. And boy, we're leaning on our beloved. God's gonna, God's gonna turn this thing around. And it won't be, it won't be something drawn out. I'm telling you, uh, I can't hardly wait. Well, I guess I can wait for the shepherd's rod because listen, this visitation I had from the Lord, <clears throat> these angels, warring angels, goodness. They would scream and they 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 said divine urgency. Sound the alarm. Uh, prepare the warriors. And I'm telling you, God's up to something. Yes. We're not going to just languish away, you know.
Can you imagine the devil trying to shut down all the churches? But he's not going to be able to do that. God says, forsake not the assembling of yourselves together. Listen, he wants you to assemble. Where two or three are gathered in his name, there he is. So I, I, uh, these sailors, I'm sure if when this first waves begin to blow, these were seasoned sailors. They didn't have mechanical. They had to pull the big nets in with, can't you see them? Big muscles and their hair is bleached from the wind and the sun and they got brown skin pulling in the ropes. And I'm sure they thought, oh, we've seen this before. But it got bad quick, didn't it? Picked the boat as high, dropped it down, put it in, did it. They staggered to and fro and they were like, see, they just drunken men. Couldn't, couldn't. And then they cried to the Lord. Listen, I don't hear much weeping in the church. I'm telling you, the righteous cry and the Lord hears them and delivers them out of all of their problems. We got, we got to get more serious about our service to God. We ought, we ought to start our prayers out like, search me, O oh God, and try me. And get our hearts and our lives clean. And then ask him to guide us and show us. And he'll do it. He will. That's part of his mission and his mandate. But the word of God, oh, man. Uh, the, the Lord really has something. They reel to and fro and they stagger. They're like drunken men. They are at their wit's end. Now, when you find somebody there... You can help them. You understand that? Yeah. Yeah. You can show them Bible verses. You can show them ver- verses here that will bring victory to their heart because they're looking. Uh, and that's, that's what's happening right now. The whole world is looking. Yes. They understand we're in chaos. They understand we're in trouble. But w- who has the answers? Yes. We do. We're the salt. Yes, we we're do. the light. We are. Yes. If my people, which are called by my name, will humble themselves, pray, seek my face, turn from the wicked way, then I'll hear from heaven, I will forgive their sin and I will, what? Heal their land. Heal their land. Uh, have you seen the droughts? Have you seen the floods? Have you, you can feel the earthquakes. What's the deal? Whose fault is it? Us, if my people. Wow. You say, Bobby, you mean you're going to put all that on the church? Yep. It's up to us, if my people. You say, well, Bobby, I've got a prayer time, but we've got the problem. The hang-up is the turning, turning from our wicked ways. Wow. Wow. You know what I did one time? I I was pastor in a a small town, and uh, the liquor crowd wanted to bring liquor in and horse racing. Now, I didn't care about the horse racing, but I was not going to let liquor come into our, our city. Okay? So, you say, what'd you do, brother? Well, I went down to the courthouse, and I looked at all the records of the people that signed the petition wanting liquor, and most of them were church members. Not only my church, but all the churches around. So, and most of them were the bankers or the the insurance salesmen. So, I photocopied and got all the uh, documentation and printed it in the paper. Yeah. Yeah. That's what I did. Stirred up the whole town. So that wasn't, that wasn't enough. So I decided to get a team together and preach on the street about this alcohol. So there's a guy, a crazy guy there, that, and he, he was known for stabbing a lot of people. The, the crowd, the, the, the liquor crowd, hired him to knife me. Oh, look out now. Ta-da. And so I'm there, I'm there preaching on the street on Saturday. My brother is with me, and uh, he, he's there, and some other Christian men are there. And, and we're preaching and trying to tell the people about the woes of alcohol. It says, who has wounds, who has uh, without a cause, those that tarry at the cup. And so, it, it, so there's the, the knifer. He's on the other side of the street. It, poor, crazy guy. Just, and so here he comes, and got a knife about that long. And he got it out like this, and here he comes. And the Lord said, here's what the Lord said. I could have knocked him out. But the Lord said, don't, don't try to defend yourself. I said, listen. 
He said, nope, don't try to defend yourself. So here he comes. He's right there. He's right there. He's right there. He's got on old bibbed overalls and he's got his knife open down. He got that through and he pulled it out. And uh, I said, God, you take over. And this guy pulls his knife out and he looked at it like he ain't never seen a knife. And he's standing in front of me going. And, and I look at him right in the face and he does like that. Clunk, clunk, threw his knife in his pocket and took running back across the road. See? God will stand with you and fight your battles. All you got to do is stand still and see the deliverance of the Lord. Yeah. But I, there for a moment, I thought, he, God said, don't defend yourself. And I thought, well, listen, uh, uh, I don't want to be, you know, cut up in sausage or something. But anyway, you can get in some situations, can't you? Yes, yes. Then, sh- <laughs> you know. Not everybody's a fan, you know what I mean? They don't, some people don't like truth. They want to live in deception. But I'll tell you what, we've got to expose the hidden works of darkness, haven't we? We sure have. We really have. Oh, man. I got, okay, I'm down in uh, uh, Brenham, Texas. That's where ice cream's made. Uh, Blue Bell ice cream's made in Brenham, Texas. I'm down there preaching. In, the, in a civic center in, in Brenham, Texas. And I'm preaching along there, and I go, yes, there's been a ritualistic murder over there under this bridge. And I called out a bridge name. And then I start back preaching. At the end of the service, everybody bow your heads. Well, everybody bowed the head except four policemen. Here they come. See, there had been a ritualistic murder over there under that bridge, and nobody knew about it but the police till I shouted it out. So they came and uh, took me aside, thought I knew something about it or had something to do with it. I said, oh no, God shows me these things. Isn't that crazy? And guess what? It got where the police would ask me what I saw about different crimes. Crazy mess, man. But see, God will do that. Surely the Lord God will do nothing but reveal his secrets to his servants, the prophets. I'm, I'm off over there somewhere in a foreign country. And they had a, the woman, uh, the lady there, uh, wanted to go make a phone call, but she had to go up in a high office to make a phone call. I don't know what country we were in. Carolyn would remember, but I had Lenny. Weird. So anyway, there I'm in the van. I didn't want to walk up 15 flights of stairs. So I'm in the van, and uh, I'm nosy. There's the lady's Bible right there. So I picked it, and I'm looking at it. And I opened the front, uh, the cover, and there was a whole bunch of people's face, uh, the family, you know, how they have a family portrait. And goodness gracious, I'm going across there looking, and I looked at a man, and all of a sudden he <laughs> disappeared under my finger. <laughs> and I thought, oh, I closed the Bible up and put it down. <laughs> so I'm trying to act cool. Here they all come. And they get back in the van, and I said to her, uh, I was nosing around in your Bible. And I know I saw the family page on the cover in, in there, and I was running my finger across there, and this guy just disappeared. She said, "That's the strangest thing. He was murdered last week." Oh. And I thought, "Uh oh." See, God would have never shown me that if I wasn't going to get involved in it. Yeah. And uh, she said, oh, "What happened?" I said, "All I saw was it just disappeared." And I said, "But uh, God wouldn't have shown me that if He's not going to show you more." What had happened? The, he, this guy was married, married to the, her, this woman's daughter, and had a son. And the son uh, carried a lunch to school, but he forgot his lunch. And the dad goes back to the house to get the boy's lunch, and somebody slit his throat, killed him. And so, uh, so the, she said to me, do you think God would show you something about it? I said, well, let me find out. I said, God, do you want to show me something, get involved in this? He said, yes, I do. And I instantly I saw a license plate. I saw a car with the license plate on it. I saw a bullet hole right where the rim of the tire goes in. And I saw that this guy was living a double life, selling drugs, in, in the drug stuff, and still trying to be a family man. But he had messed up on the drug deal kind of thing. And that's, that's what had happened. And so I said, Lord, well, show me where this is at. 
and uh, it, I, I saw this is uh, I saw this the road number and everything else and it, I saw the it went down to an old oil derrick that had been abandoned and that's where uh, it, the thing had happened and so anyway the police tried to hire me to 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 give words about what happens isn't that cool? The U.S. government gave me a phone that I could talk to the government about stuff back when they listened. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Yeah, that's true. I'm telling you. I go one place and they go, there's four guys back there in suits that want to talk to you. And so, and sometimes you have to be careful what you talk about. But usually I just blabber it out anyway about it. I found the silos out in Nebraska and talked about it. Government came and said, please keep that silent. We have had spent, I forget how much money, trying to hide them. But I saw them out in the cornfield <laughs> yeah, in big con concrete tunnels. Nuclear silos. Yeah, these the silos and, you know. But God shows stuff, crazy stuff. Yeah. Yeah. I, we've stopped terrorist attacks before. The one down there, well, here's one. Down there in uh, uh, Atlanta. Remember when they are going to have the World Olympics in Atlanta? And so, uh, how could I get involved in that? Here's how it happened. You ready? All right. The Lord said, if you, Bob Jones and yourself, don't get all the pastors together in Atlanta, there's going to be a nuclear device set off, and it's going to kill 26 million people. Whoa. That's what he said. So Bob Jones, myself, go down there, and we rally a whole host of pastors and we pray against that thing that I just said. Somebody setting off a nuclear device and killing uh, 20 something million people. So, okay, you ready? And the Lord said to prove this is a true word from God, they built uh, dormitories for the athletes to stay in and he said, to tell them this is a true uh, prophetic word, the dormitories that were built are going to start to sink. And they started sinking. I get a call from the guy that built him and said, how low are they going? I said, just enough to get your attention. He, he, was a bill, he built him and he moved to Morningstar over that right there. Anyway, so, you know, they, one, one little backpack went off. Remember that? Yeah. Uh, killed one person. I think that's what it was. Oh, the flack. That's those prophets for you. <laughs> Always exaggerating. Da, 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 da. Whoa. I said, Lord, you. you told me. He said, yep. All these years went by, click, 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 and finally they released the records. They caught a terrorist group, and here's what the record says. We estimate 28 million people would have been killed, but they caught the, the guys before they could detonate this dirty bomb thing. Isn't that something? See, the prophets could be very beneficial. You can, you can look. We prophesied the day and the hour that there was a storm war. We prophesied the terrorist attack before it happened. See, God will tell the prophets what's going to happen. And then we need to share it to the church so they can pray. Okay. And God will talk to you if you'll listen. I preached Robert Slareton's book, The Generals. Lord visited with me and said, you lied to, you lied to the people about my servant, A.A. A. Allen. I said, no, I didn't lie. He said, I preached exactly what Robert Slayerton had written. And the Lord said, oh, that's a lie. When you die and stand before me, you're going to find out that A.A. A. Allen died righteous, murdered by the Christian mafia, I might add. And so I took a lot of ridicule for that. And then all this time passed. And the, the mortician that wrote the thing, he, he sent them a, the family a check and said it was all a fix. It was all, it was all staged. There was no alcohol at all. Isn't, isn't that, I'm telling you guys, uh, it, 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 it's really amazing. We better listen to God's side of the story. You understand? I'm telling you. Okay. That said, when you die, you'll stand before me and you'll see that A.A. A. Allen died righteous. But they tried to set it up. And the, more, the mortician guy sent him a, a, a letter and sent some things. A man in Knoxville, Tennessee had all the documentation to it that it was all a sham, you know, to disgrace the family. But he died righteous. Amen. Mm -hmm. yes. See, Amen. you can stir up a whole bunch of stuff just trying to listen to God. Isn't that something? Yes. So you say, well, Bobby, 
God showing you anything now? Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Uh, he's a, God's going to show up and show off, yes. and he's going to sh- do things in a manner we've never seen before, and we're going to be shocked. Amen. The holy fear of God is about to grip the people of God. And guess who it's coming to first? You'll never, the millennials. Yes. yes. The millennials are going to be gripped by the holy reverential fear of the Lord. Wow. And I'll tell you what, the whole church is going to be gripped by the reverential fear of the Lord. We need it. Yes, we do. So anyway, we're getting ready to get out of here in a moment. I'm going to sign some books. I, I, I got a pen somewhere. Uh, good Lord. Pens. Yeah, I'll, I'll do something. Okay. You say, well, what, what, kind, what, what books are back there? Well, the angel book, the one we talked about, the angels and the demons. I give the angels names. I, I do, I do a, a whole study back there of what the angels do for Christ what the angels did for us and, uh, and, and we know what the devil wants to do and wants to kill every one of us yeah. but we talk about the different odors of the demons and the different operations of the demons it's pretty wild good lord uh, one time I was at my office and a, a rap came on the door and this guy walks in and he's demonized just demonized and here's what he said in a spooky voice you ready? <laughs> My God wants to know what your God's going to do. I said, oh, that's simple. He's going to cast the devil out of you. <laughs> so we cast the devil out of him, and he turned in being his right mind. You can't play with the, these dungeon and dragons and uh, Pokemons and Harry Potter. All of that's witchcraft. Stay away from that stuff. But anyway, my God wants to know what your God's going to do. I said, oh, that's easy. You know. Yeah, it, and... It'll, God will cast out the devil and the people look like they just woke up in a new world. Yes. But see, somebody's got to, Somebody got somebody's got to do stuff like that. Yes. And I'm telling you, mm, I've been in real public places and have to do stuff like that. Yeah. But uh, listen, you get people's attention. Yes. Hey, I was in an airport and uh, busy traveling. And I sat down in a, one of the terminals. I sat down, and I was, I was give out. And I laid my head over like this. And the next thing you know, I'm, <laughs> I'm out like a light. And I'm sound asleep. And I'm awakened by a, a, a witch on her all fours coming around me like a wolf. <laughs> like this. Now I'm mad because I got woke up and got woke up by a witch. So I did like that. And it knocked her up in the air about this high. She falls down there and she's squealing. You know, I can't make the sound. And here comes the medics with those charging things. I said, that won't help her, you know. It, but see, yes. we have got to start yes. being who we are. Yes. You say, well, I don't want no trouble. You're already in trouble. <laughs> Yeah, the devil's after you, your family, your fortune, everything. He's not going to sign some kind of peace treaty. We're going to have to drive him out. The Bible said if you catch a thief, you can command him to pay back sevenfold. And the Lord's going to recover and, and, and overtake and get back everything the devil's stolen from the church. Uh, so anyway, we got to get out. We're coming tomorrow. Isn't that? Tomorrow. Tomorrow is only what? A day away. Isn't that something? Well, that's something. I tell you what I think you ought to do is write a song. Not just play it. Write a song, okay? I mean, a melody will come uh, on your fingers, and it doesn't matter much about the words right now, but there's something about the tune, okay? And just uh, it, it'll bring a, 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 a contentment and a peace to people's heart. And, okay? And just the, the keys. And then later on, you can put words to it if you want to. But like, I, I would be good at something like that. You know? yeah. 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 Anyway, one time I, a lady was at, my, at our church in Texas, and she was back there, never been in the church before in our church. I said, lady, stand out in the aisle. God said he's giving you a pen of a ready writer. Mm. She's back there. Only thing she'd ever written was that scary movie, Carrie. But it was Anna Roundtree. Yeah. 
And that's who it was. So she got the pen and then she started writing Christian novels. Anna Roundtree. Isn't that, isn't that, and yeah, isn't that, isn't that wonderful? Yeah, that's wild. She got the pen of a ready writer. I'm sorry? Still alive. Her husband's passed away, but Anna's, Anna's still a, she'll get a little group together there in Moravian Falls and she's, she'll, we used to live right beside them in one of the little cabins and they were so cute, him and her, they had a little puppy and they'd get out there and romp around with that little puppy, you know, but uh, the, she's, uh, she's still riding some and uh, got a real connection with the Lord. Yeah. Anna Roundtree. Wrote that scary movie Carrie, you know, you know, and then, uh, yeah, uh, she, yeah, she's wrote, wrote wonderful books about them. We were talking about her today. Yeah, yeah, she's she's pretty unique. Well, that's what we got to do. Yes. You know what he says? Don't give up. Don't give in. Just strengthen yourself, okay? And you, you'll see some great changes. All right. You've come this far, and he hadn't failed you. Okay? And you're right at the threshold of a breakthrough. I'm talking to this guy right there. Okay? You can get back everything the enemy's stolen. Okay? God, God will send angels to help you do it. I'm telling you. Here's, here's something all of you are to like. I was preaching in a church and the Lord I have an announcement. I said, okay. He said, say this. I am putting money in people's wallet, purse, and pocket and they know that it wasn't there before you announced it. So I said, okay. God says he's putting money in people's wallet, pocket, and uh, that, that you know wasn't there. People started screaming. They'd jump up and have a fist full of money. Yeah, out of their coat pocket, out of their wallet. They knew it wasn't there. And I tell you, I thought, boy, this is good. So I was excited for the people. I don't know how much. They had fistfuls of money paper money and it wasn't in their pocket or their wallet or their coat uh, and so I thought that was really something so they carried me back to the hotel and I had my little zipper bag and so I was pretty tired so I sat down and I was going to get my charger out for the phone and I unzipped it and it goes Oof! full of money so I didn't put it there and I'm, I, I guarded the bag nobody else came up there and slipped it in see God can do things that are unbelievable. Amen. And just believe him for stuff. Yes. I can do all things through Christ. He, he, he can provide, can he? Yes. He really can. The devil is a thief. Yes. And if you catch a thief, you can command him to pay back sevenfold. Yes. And so anyway, we're not, we're not going to put up with his harassment any longer. Yes. We're not. I, I went to a place and the pastor's son was demon possessed and uncontrollable but the daddy was a, a orthodox preacher and didn't believe in demons and so the Lord said don't push this till I tell you so I was there two days with a, this guy was a, 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 a kind of a professor in one and so two days went by and we're having coffee with the, the man and his boy has been pretty rambunctious and so uh, the, the preacher asked me said well what do you reckon's wrong with my boy I said well I'll tell you what's wrong with your boy he's got a demon in him and this guy you could see his mind just whirling and he basically said well we never believed in demons I said well that's why he's got one and I said uh, you can set him free right here today and he called his boy from upstairs and the boy just bounced there and kind of like an a angry dog or something. And we cast the devil out of his son. And he was just the most loving. And he grabbed his dad and hugged him. See? And the dad just put up with that because his denomination didn't believe in spiritual warfare. I'd get out of that denomination, wouldn't you? And so his boy got delivered. Isn't that something? And uh, what? We don't have to put up with all that. Well, you know... Uh, no, I don't know. I know whom the sun sets free. Free, free indeed. And we need to start aggressively speaking to people about their freedom. He can take you off of narcotics. Yeah. Uh, 
he delivered me from smoking. I smoke four packs of cigarettes a day. Wow. Only way to smoke more is get up earlier, you know. And night I got saved, I bought a, I had a brand new Zippo lighter, you know. Back then when you cool, you put your lighter in your pocket and struck it on the way out. You know, Jimmy Dean, you know. Anyway, so I put them on my thing, roll them up my sleeve. The night I got, I surrendered to preach, I rolled down the car window, threw out my pack of brand new cools and my Zippo lighter, you know. God totally delivered me. Thank God. Yeah, took them just like that. Yeah, four packs a day. I mean, see, God's good, isn't he? And his mercies are new every morning. Have you read Lamentation? Lamentation says, God's mercies are new every morning. Great is his faithfulness. Every morning he gets up and pushes the reset button. His mercies are new every morning. Great is his faithfulness. Okay, so we're going to pray for you. And I will see you at the book table. We'll see you in the morning. What time is service in the morning? Prayer at 9, service starts at 10. It gets here, it starts at 10. Prayer at 9.30. Prayer at 9. Worship service at 10. Worship service at 10. You'll help me remember that. I went to sleep. I had done a big conference, a pastor's conference with big known pastors. We go to eat somewhere. And um, I'd been preaching for days and I was rather tired. And where we were at, they had kind of a lounge with big overstuffed chairs. And so I sit down in this overstuffed chair and all the brothers are talking, but they're talking about stuff that I'm not really interested in, you know. And, and you know, and uh, a girl that was running for Miss America, uh, she had asked me to pray for her. And so I thought, okay. And that's what I had on my mind, that uh, Marsha Allen. I was supposed to pray for Marsha Allen. She's running for Miss America at that time. And so there we are. And the, all the preachers are around in their sofas and stuff like that. And I'm sitting in the chair. And my, I was thinking, I'm supposed to be praying for Marsha Allen. And uh, the, the people, it sounded like their voice just went away. I went stone cold asleep. <laughs> like that. And one of the pastors came over and got me by the shoulder and says, Brother Bobby, are you awake? I said, no, I was praying for Marsha Allen. That's what I said. You know, yeah, I was sound asleep, man. You know, they had, they had already, you know. But see, we just got to be yourself. Yeah, that's right. Take a nap if yeah. you need one. Sometimes I think I'm getting to be a professional napper. Listen, mm, don't, you, don't you like just the peace of God? Man, man, one of the things that'll help you is get you some nice music and just play it. Play it in your room. I mean, good music, nice, nice music that soothes you, and it'll help you. Because, boy, the things of the world get you just like a... And we've got to learn how to relax, don't you think? Be at peace. The peace of God that surpasses what? All understanding will keep your hearts and your minds. That's right. Just instead of going, chill out. Yes. Chill out. Easy for me to say. <laughs> but we got to learn to chill out. And it doesn't matter about the circumstances. You can change the circumstances, your presence. Yeah. You need to walk into a room, the whole room go, wow, did you feel that? Because we're from a different place, aren't we? And it, it should show and shine. Should. Really. They, I like it when they go, well, what do you do? <laughs> I tell them, well, <laughs> I do a lot of stuff. <laughs> I do do a lot of stuff. But, you know, can I tell one more story and then I'll pray? I've been, I was in Paris preaching in Paris. And so I'm leaving out of Charles de Gaulle Airport in one of them double-decker things. And so... I'd been there and we'd had a great meeting and wonderful things had happened. But we get off on, we take off from Charles de Gaulle, 747 or whatever, and get out there pretty well and it makes a hard right turn. Well, pilot comes on and goes, well, I guess you realize that we've had a problem. We lost an engine and we're coming back to the terminal. I go, Okay. Thing goes all the way around, comes back and lands, and they wouldn't turn 400 something people loose in the whole thing. 
So they put us in an a area like a, a theater. And there was all these people up here, and, and they kept us in there while they get to a plane, another plane. And so I'm sitting there, and I'm questioning God. Hey, God, how come you let the plane default? How come you let that happen? He said, well, I let it happen so that you could stand here and preach to all these people. I said, uh, God, I don't think they want to hear it. He said, we're not discussing that. I turned the plane around, and I said, well, Lord. And most of the people on that plane were plastic surgeons. They had been there to do some kind of uh, uh, thing where they were learning new techniques, and most of them were pretty arrogant, and you know what I mean. But anyway, I said, God. They were madder than me about the plane coming back. And I said, God, I don't think I feel like preaching. He said, you felt like preaching in the conference. He said, I want you to preach here. Okay. So I don't know. I stood there and the people are all up like that, like a, a slanted seats. And I was just going to say, ladies and gentlemen, but it must have been, ladies and gentlemen, because I had their attention and preached the gospel. I mean, the plain, pure gospel. These men and women started filing by giving their heart to Christ. Thank you, Jesus. I'm telling you, I am telling you. I, I, it stunned me. And the Lord said, I want my gospel preached. And he yes. said, and that's what happened. And a lot of these uh, guys and gals up there, uh, they would keep up with me. They'd write me notes and stuff like that. And I'm telling you, we got to be instant in season and out of season. Yes. There ain't no time when you go, well, I don't feel up to it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Gear it up and get in there. Yeah. yeah. Oh, boy. <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> I told you that was my last story. There's people watching this thing. And let me tell you something about yourself, okay? Uh, God's got a plan that's bigger than you. And let me just tell you, you'll wear yourself out running from God. Amen. So I want you, your name is, they, you, they, your real name is Benjamin. They call you Ben. Or, but you've been running away from God. That'll wear you out. Right now, this moment, you're going to turn. You're going to turn and run to the Lord. It'll be the best journey and jolt you've ever had. And he's, you've been vacillating on what kind of career to take. One is uh, questionable. Don't go that way. Don't. Go to the left. I want you to go to the right. And when you look on your desk, there are going to be the two proposals there. Take the one on the right. And God's going to change your whole life. He said, I'm going to put favor and grace on you. And I'll tell you why he's going to do it. You, have a grand, you had a grandmother named Ethel. And uh, she has prayed a hedge around you. And you better be grateful and thankful for that. And I, and I want you to, this is true. You can, you can check it out. And, and God's going to give you favor. And it's going to change you. You've been running from him. You're going to run to him. And you're going to find everything you've needed and longed for in his arms. Okay? That's a guy named Ben. Well, like Benjamin. But uh, I, I want you to know something. It's going to be pretty nice. Uh, so you'll, in, in this job you're going to get, you'll have your own logo on whatever you're going to make. It'll be pretty neat. Well, that'll be good. God bless you. You say, well, well uh, how does it happen? You just follow God. Amen. So you've been running from him? Run to him, okay? God bless you. Isn't that cool? Now, here's what's going to happen. Here's what I, uh, I, want, I want Ben to contact the church and, and just give a little report. And just give a little report and say, there was that guy screaming and hollering and said, but I ran to God and God has changed my life. And just tell him your story. And listen, it'll get bigger and better and better. It really will. Uh, it's really nice, okay? God's plans are bigger than we can make for ourselves. Jeremiah 29, 11, I know my thoughts. I think towards you. Thoughts of your success, not your failure. My intention is to bring you to a good end, not a dismal demise. Well, I'm going to the book table. <laughs> hey, y'all want to? Uh, I, I got, uh, yeah, I'll take that. This will be good. Oh, I better take this mic off. It'll be in a pawn shop before morning. No, 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 we don't. <laughs> yeah. Pawn shop. Oh, boy. There is. Wonder, wonder what all's going on. 
Okay, uh, here's this thing. You know what we ought to do? What? We ought to just say, Lord Jesus, have your way in every part of my life. I hold back nothing. I give you permission, God, to change anything in my life that needs to be changed. Any alteration, I surrender to you. Have your way in my life. That's the happiest people on earth that say, God, not my way, your way.